Wallace is going to do the sales pitch for his own podcast. The activists will be after me. Morning, Holly. There we are, we can we? What a beast. I am bad Good morning. Kev's just away to spread some urea, so I'm going to grab a forklift here, load him up. Good stuff, make stuff grow. Right, there's a couple of flails to change on the topper, so I'm just going to change them just now before Dunk heads out in it. Yeah, I mean, I think it... Yeah. Come on. Hey, So I'm checking how this cab's getting on. Come on. What do you want? We cabbie's doing fine. Two to go. Seven wee check up on the coos, all looking well. You can hear Euro up there in the sheds. Have a listen. There he goes. Percy's getting some action. Go on, go on. He just missed him, he had a go on that cow there. Listen to him. <coughs> Having his breakfast. Next stop, need to pick up some petrol for the quad bike and for the power washer. Just as well, I'm not after diesel. There we go. £37 worth. Almost the fent. 718. £16 cheaper at Tesco's than it was at, was it SO or Shell? One of the two. S, I can't remember, but another service station just down the road. Love the smell of petrol. So there's a few of the cows out there that are a wee bit bloated. So apparently vegetable oil here is the solution. So I don't think they're too bad, so they're not needing any um, immediate intervention, but a bit of vegetable oil just in their water trough, and they drink it up, seems to ease the bloat. I asked about that wide one yesterday and a friend said probably bloat, which makes sense because they've just gone out to grass not that long. Um, quick change of diet onto grass can make them bloat a wee bit. So put some vegetable oil into the water, eases the bloat while they get into the rhythm of digesting grass rather than being on silage or ammonia straw. It's meant to be around about 250 mils per cow. So I've got five litres here which would do them all, but obviously because oil floats on water, they're going to drink, the first few cows might get more than the other, so, so I'll just add wee bits at a time rather than just chucking it all in. Right, spraying to be done. There's a big list of spray jobs to do. I'm going to give this tractor a quick rinse over there because it's absolutely manky. Good enough. Right, it's better than it was. Definitely not perfect, but I'm away spraying anyway and it's been quite wet, so it's going to get quite mucky again. Good to go with the spray. Just just filling up with the good stuff. Ooh, love that smell. Hate the price. Avoid the road. We're off to the races. It's pretty busy today. Kev's away up there spreading fat. He's got the fork lift out, fill bags up. Diggers are in, putting in a drain over there. Uh, Dunk's kicking about somewhere, topping grass. Everything's going. There goes Kev. 
spread in some urea. It's an okay day for it, the ground's a bit wet but the week's looking a bit mixed, it's to be windy tomorrow. So yeah, we might make a wee bit of a mess on the ground today with it being wet, but we'll actually be able to spray and spread fur because it's a calm day today. How goes the hair? Came to my attention that not everyone knows what these are. Tram lines. So the drill drives down the field, sowing, so this is barley, sowing barley, and there's two valves that shut off um, the seed flow to two rows there and two rows there. So there's no seed that grows in those rows. Pre-GPS, it would show you where to go. Now with GPS, you don't need the tram lines to know where you're going. The tractor figures itself out. But also, if you sow them um, and just leave them, leave the whole, whole field sowing and drive over it, you end up with wee shorter bits of crop and they don't ripen at the same rate as the rest of the field. So when you're coming to combine, these bits can be really green while the rest of the field is ready to combine and it makes a wee bit of a mess of the crop you're bringing in. So if they're not there, they can't do that. This field done, on to the next. Could do with ripping that hedge out and putting a pipe in the drain. There's a queue to get out of the field. Kev's waiting on me. Drain going in there. The mound's getting bigger and bigger. It's quite handy actually having to make that mound. It was a bit of a, oh, we have to make this mound, but it's quite handy for dumping stuff that's coming out where the drain's going or other bits that are getting dug out. You don't need to take all the rubbish away, it just gets buried in the mound. Another load, let's get back in the whip. Another load of sweet, sweet chems. The activists will be after me. There goes dad, he's just been taking fur out to Kev. Seen that, that looks like half a bag. Maybe it's a bag full of bags. Grab the wee drink, what we got? Whoa, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough aim, mate. I'm not gonna try, there you go. Mel... Turns out it's a different language. It says it below, orange and pomegranate. Melograno, sounds Italian. It's now four o'clock, it's looking a bit gloomy over there. I'm gonna check the weather after this. I'm going all right, I've not, I've not done much, only started at half 12, just because it was quite wet this morning, didn't want to get going too early. So about four o'clock, thinking, oh, I'll just sort out my video for today, because uh, usually what I do is upload it at night, and then during the day at some point when I've got 10 minutes, I quickly make a thumbnail. I'm just gonna do that right now while I'm spraying, but I realized I've not uploaded it, so. So yesterday's video, which is, uh, which would have been Tuesday's video, was late because of this. Twix pit stop, eight out of 10. There's a drain that's gone in here, soak away any water that would lie here. I'm doing another across that way, just or just on that side of the mound, soak away the water. What am I spraying today? So this is spring barley, laureate is the variety, and I'm spraying to control mildew and wrinkle. They're the kind of main ones I'm trying to hit right now. Rhynchosporium, I think is a longer name. Mildew is like a like wee white kind of mouldy bits that appear on the leaves. I'll show you a picture here and it's, it's worse in kind of damp, humid conditions and it can spread with the wind because that mold kind of break off and fly in the wind. And then wrinkles, kind of like orangey, reddy type marks. It, it decreases the, hold on, two seconds. Uh, it decreases grain size. Just remember and turn this off. Job done. There's Kev's as well. Kev's done, I'm done. Two blue machines, looking well actually. They've both been washed. Semi, mine's been semi washed. Yeah, so Kev's been spreading fat urea on winter oats, spring oats, and spring barley today at um, 100. Oh, how many kilos? Um, winter oats and spring barley got 100 kilos a hectare and 75 kilos a hectare for the spring oats. Oats are a pretty low input crop, and um, they're not that big a volume yielding versus like barley or wheat but they don't have as big a input cost as well. Right, just been on the R2, R2K podcast with Wallace. Go on, Wallace. Do the sales pitch. Wallace is going to do the sales oh, pitch God. for his own podcast. Hello, Crawford's Farm fans. It's a pleasure to be on here. Good. This is this is really meeting your heroes, this is. Uh, if you want to check out the R2 cast, especially with Crawford's Farm, or Crawford of Crawford's Farm, it'll be on the 10th of June. Rural to Kitchen YouTube. Check the Instagram and Facebook out as well, and I shall see you over there. Smashing, I need, I need the toilet, I need to get going.